Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins and today I want to show you not only how to build this three-dimensional shapes card from scratch, it's really quick and easy using just one die set, but I'd also like to introduce you to a brand new collection from Textures that incorporates this die set plus some other gorgeous items. So this card features my absolute all-time favourite colours here, but you can of course colour it any way you wish. And when I designed this particular die, which is the Winter Rose from the new Secret Garden collection, I wanted to ensure that you could not only build yourself a di dimensional flower, but you could also build it as a stem and then you could also in addition have the shaped card to go with it. It's just a little bit of extra special something for your cards that you're making at home. Now, as you can see here, I've used the flowers without that shaped card element. And you can absolutely do this and build up your own bouquet or stem of flowers, but you can also use the heads on their own. Each one has layering petals, so you can really build up lots of dimension and texture. So for this one, I've used the stem as it is on the packet on this side. And then on this side, I've switched, switched everything over just for a little bit of fun. But you can really build them as you like. And here's another example showing you the depth that you can get. Now this is still going to go in an envelope, you can still post it if you wish, but you've got lots and lots of texture there. Now this die set and the rest of the collection, which I will show you towards the end, is all available on Craft Stash exclusively and you can see the details and links for that down below. So putting this card together is really, really super easy. So we're going to use one die to create the shaped base. Now I suggest doing this first because once you've got the shaped card, you can then place your flowers on top and you know they're in the perfect position. Now, if you've known me for any amount of time, you'll know that I do like to have elements overlapping my card slightly. So for this one, I am going to have the top and the bottom slightly overlapping. Low tack tape is going to be your best friend here. So I'm just going to place a little bit on the edges and you can twist this edge if you want to. I've got it pretty much straight but you can have it at an angle if you prefer and I'm going to apply my tape mostly to the right hand side, the outside of the die, that way it's going to stay in place and when I release it it's not going to leave any residue on the main part of the card that I want to use. So I'm just going to run this through now my die cutting machine. Now this is on a folded piece of cardstock creating my card base. This die will cut through both layers beautifully. So after taking your tape off and taking your die away, you might be left with a little bit at the top of the rose there. So just take your scissors and cut that straight down in a vertical line from the fold of the card and that will give you your shaped card base. Now if you wish you can also do this at the bottom if there's a little bit of a gap between the stem and the card base. So now that's complete, I can put that to the side for now and start working on building up these beautiful flowers. During this video, I'm going to be giving you my top tips for creating the dimension in the flowers and for it holding still as well once you've constructed your card. Now you can cut all your flowers and all your petals from simple coloured cardstock, but I think it always looks better if you've inked your cardstock first and then die cut from it. You get lots of colour and texture variation throughout the flowers and the petals and it just looks absolutely beautiful, but also you can then easily colour match to something. So the colours I've chosen are nice bright bright ones. I've got peacock feathers for a teal blue and I'm blending this onto a really strong cardstock. So this is around about 300 GSM. This is only going to help me once I start um, bending and shaping my petals. It's going to hold its shape rather than if I used a thinner paper, they would just flatten out again. Now I need to bear in mind, I need to ink enough for both the base of the flowers and the petals to go on top. And you'll see more of that once we start die cutting. So I've got myself kind of a square and I'm inking half of it diagonally. And I've just gone over that center line a little because I'm now going to do the same with my next color, which is a purple, it's Seedless Preserves. There's arguments that this is a pink. If you have a look at my Distress Ink and Oxide color combination series where we focus on this particular color, you can see what I decide in that video. I'll make sure that's linked up here for you and if you are confused about Distress Oxides, the colours, the makeup of them, I've got lots of videos on my channel that you can find explaining all of them. Now as these two particular colours overlap, they're going to form a purple which then gives me my third colour. These look so pretty together, like I say, they're my absolute favourite, but you can go with any colour choice that you wish. 
So now again, I'm going to just overlap that center line there with my purple, just bringing it in a little. You can see that purple starting to come through with the blue overlapping and I'm going to come back to my first color and now do a little more blending over into the seedless preserves. Now this does not have to be perfect blending at all. In fact, this is really rough. Um, I'm quite liking that I've got rough patches in there. So variations of color rather than a smooth transition. This is going to help with those beautiful colors and texture coming through on the petals. Now, before I cut this out, I always go in with a spritz of water. So a light mist to give me some lighter patches. Water on distress oxide is going to create that oxidization and it's going to make this almost look as if the uh, water splats are bleached. It's going to pull the color out of them a little bit and you get a lot of texture. Now, that was a light mist. You can see the speckles coming here, but I can also do larger blobs as well. So I just do that on my hand. With this bottle, you can do it, but it, I find it's a little bit unpredictable if I specifically want large areas, large dots of water, so I tend to still put it on my hand. Now you do need to make sure this is thoroughly dry before you die cut. If it's not completely dry, you're going to end up just tearing your cardstock instead of cutting through. So I've blocked away the excess. Now you can really see those white blobs coming through the inked areas, and I tend to take my heat tool and finish off the drying. Now looking at the die set, there's a lot of little pieces here and my suggestion to you is to group them at the beginning when you first get the die set. Use some low tack tape to hold them together or something like a magnetic shim so you know which parts go with what. It's worth taking these five or 10 minutes to work it all out at the start. I am going to be creating a PDF download for you so that you can work out which pieces go onto which flower. But until then, simply follow this instruction. I'll run through the petal placement as slowly as possible for you and we can get these flowers. So here I've got all of the petal pieces taped together, just like I say with a low tack tape and I'm going to place them on here. I've then got the three solid flower heads and they are the much larger pieces. If they're not going to fit on your bl blended area all together like that, we can take these apart because they're only three larger dies. I'm not so worried about these being taped together. That was probably from a previous project anyway. So just placing these on like so. Now I've also taped together all of the leaf parts. So this is the stem, the leaves and the uh, part at the bottom of the bud, the green part. So because these will all be cut from green. Now of course you can separate them if you'd like your leaves to be a different colour from your stem for example, but I find it much easier and quicker to work this way. I've then also taped together my stamen, but I tend to just use coloured cardstock for this, uh, like a yellow, because it's not really a large enough area to show the ink blending. So all my pieces have die cut. I'm going to pop out the main flower heads first. And what I like to do is take the packaging and I go by this. So on your packaging, you will see a slight color variation in the petals that's showing you the light and dark as in the higher ones and the lower ones. So just keep that to the side as I build this up. So I like to position my petals the same way as they are on there. So this one facing that way, this one that way, and this one that way. So now I've got all of my petals here and I need to start thinking about where they're going to go on each flower. I would suggest for you to start with the most obvious one. So if you have a look at the edges, you can usually tell with each petal where the center point is on each of them and which is the outside edge because they're mostly shaped like upside down teardrops. So then have a look at each of your flowers and see where this shape re is represented on the edge of one of the flowers. Like I say, once you've done this once or twice, you can take photos as you go along, but you really are going to get a feel for it very, very quickly. So I know that some of the larger petals go on the larger head and I can quite easily now start to see where they sit. So there's three on this one before the stamen then goes on. There's also three that go on to this one before the stamen goes on. And then there's a fourth one, which is a really odd shaped one. And that one goes on this left edge here and that goes over the stamen. So it looks as if the petals curled over. It all looks a bit confusing at the moment, but trust me, once you've got it in front of you, it will make sense. Then the smaller one, this smaller head here has three parts. So it has a bit like the teardrop, but it has a very squared edge here. This one goes in the center. And then you have two that fit on either side. They're quite similar shapes. So they go either side like so. 
you're going to be then left with three pieces. The two oval looking shapes, these are actual buds on their own, so we'll put those to the side. And you've got one more. Now this last one just sits on the petal just there. So again, that's a folded over petal to give that look of dimension. So now I need to start thinking about constructing these. I would go to this stage and then add my stamen in and then add these extra little pieces afterwards. Now with my stamen also cut, let's get in really close and see how I shape these petals for the most dimension possible. Now this is where I use my tweezers and my pokey tool and I have a good wet glue with me as well. The glue doesn't really matter which one you prefer to use, you can also use hot glue but I find that with flowers and hot glue you can then often see the glue so this is only really going to be possible if you really want to lift those petals up an extreme amount. So I'm going to keep my base flat, okay, because I want that to still stick to my card where it needs to be. So I'm going to be shaping the petals. So let's start with this one here. So I'm going to hold the end and just make sure you're holding the piece that comes to the middle of the flower. Use your pokey tool and just roll over it. So just like so, so we're curving it. And this is the reason for using a 300 GSM cardstock because this way I can really get a nice curve on there that I know is going to hold well. Now also at this end that I was just holding, I'm going to add a little kink to it. So just fold it the opposite direction. So now I have got more of an S shape. And with this S shape, I'm going to apply a little dot of glue to the center and I'm just going to use my tweezers and I'm going to line up the end of the petal with the shaped base here to make sure I've got it in the right place and then press that center down. Now as I press the center down this lifts up and that's fine as long as I lined it up to start with I know it falls in around about the right place and the beauty of these is that if you don't quite get it in the right place it doesn't matter because it's an organic shape. Now you may like I have get a little bit of glue here just squelch out the edges but that's fine it's all going to be covered up with the same and it's not an issue. But now you can see that I've got this dimension here. So if you did want to use a hot glue, what I would be doing is putting a tiny bit in the center and I would be putting a large blob underneath this curved area just here to really get in there and hold the shape up. But because we're using a card stock and it's just a card that's going to be handed to somebody, I'm not worried about supporting that curve there. So I'm going to repeat this now with the rest of my petals. So curving each one, it doesn't have to be as slow as the one I just did. And then adding a dot of glue to the little fold in the end so that we've got that lift. Now I tend to curve the main petals, but when it's little pieces like this that is just adding a bit of dimension, I don't worry about curving these because they're just a little bit small, a little bit fiddly. I just place these on as they are flat and shape them to the existing petal that's underneath. Now for my stamen to go in the center and I tend to press this down with my tweezers in the middle and then use something like my pokey tool while I'm still pressing down to lift the stamen up. We don't want to lift up the center there, we want that to stay down but by lifting the stamen up we get even more dimension and shape here and you can do a couple of layers of stamen if you prefer. So there I've got my first beautiful dimensional flower that's going to go onto my card. It's kind of abstract with the colours. If you prefer not to have this abstract look, you can definitely be blending colours that are closer to each other and then you will get more of a natural look. But I really love the pops of blue and purple. It's kind of mystical, magical. Yeah, really love that. So I'm going to go with it. Now I'm going to construct the other two flowers and then we're going to start putting these together on the stem. So my flower heads are now all ready and I'm going to be using twisted citron blended cardstock. So again, I could use solid color cardstock, but I do like the slight variation you get even when you're only ink blending one color. So for this one, I'm going to be cutting the green stems. So the flowers, the stems, everything there just from this one color there's not really enough of it to worry about ink blending too much i might add slightly darker shading to the ends of the leaves but i can do that after they're cut so i'm going to add a slight bit of depth to the bottom of the leaves here i've just got a forest moss ink blending brush this is a dark green and i'm not putting any more ink on i'm just going to press a little bit of the excess ink from the bristles into the base of my leaves so i could do this with the three large ones but that's all okay Okay, now to our card base. The first thing you want to do is put your stem on because this is going to be the anchor for all of your other pieces. 
so a little bit of wet glue down the stem and you've actually got like little thorns on the stem and they make it much easier for you to line up on the black base because we have these little notches in a couple of places now the black card base is going to be slightly offset slightly larger than the florals that you're putting on so bear that in mind there will be ever such a slight black border afterwards so as i put this down and i'm going to make sure that it lines up with those thorns just like so that's perfect I'm going to trim the end because I knew that the end would overlap ever so slightly because it did when I cut the card base. Then let's take this side flower to be able to show you that black uh, excess border. So as I kept my base flat, I can add glue to all of this. I can line up where my flower's got to go and just place it down there. And as you can see, a very slight border. It is really tiny. Try not to press down too much on the petals that you've just curled and shaped because, of course, you don't want to lose that shape. But just pressing down on the base and the centre instead. Maybe get some tweezers underneath the petals if you can. Then I'm going to repeat this for the top one as well. I tend to go with the largest ones first and then work my way down to the smallest ones. So again, taking a look at the shape that's on here. So it goes this way there we go now the buds are again nice and easy you've got two ovals or circles these are a large one which goes at the top here and again you'll see how that fits to the card base so we'll put this down first like so and then we've also cut the piece around the bud the greenery just here and that should fit over the top nicely the tweezers are really helpful for this Look, that just fits absolutely perfectly over there now you've got leaf shapes here as well so with the leaves I'm going to shape them the just the three large leaves so I'm going to curl them in the same way as I did the petals giving it that little step at the end so that I've got a platform for gluing apply my glue to the base and then again follow you can follow of course the image on the front of the packaging if you need like I say once you've put one or two of these together you won't need to follow any more so I'm just gluing that base down and following the shape of the black here the same for this one so that will be this leaf here a little bit of a cur curve with my tweezers now this left hand leaf doesn't have a shape of course or a silhouette to guide you this can go anywhere you wish but where I tend to put it which is the same as on the packaging just here is at the base of the middle sized flower so this side one here so getting my shape and I'm just doing this with my fingers now and just pop that somewhere around about there and the leaves can be pointing upwards or they can be pointing downwards now I've got the small flower head too so lots of glue on the base of that and this one goes here but we do also have the base of that in the green to put on to make it more realistic so it doesn't just look like a blob of color sitting on a stem and it really does make all the difference to making this look as realistic as possible and my last little bud is this purple one so I'm going to put the greenery on it first so it just sits covers most of that up and then the two together I will glue down onto the end of the last stem that has nothing on it just here like so and there we have it as quickly as that we've built up a three-dimensional shaped card really quickly and easily you can do this with virtually any die cuts that you have at home but of course this die set is going to make it super easy for you and this die set also has the shaped card base too now let's take a look at what other items are in the texture secret garden collection now excitingly we've got two new items that I've never had in a textures collection before and these are letterpress plates. Now these can work for stamping, they can also work for giving you that letterpress look by embossing into your cardstock. 
With these and the Spellbinders bed press system, you're going to be able to create beautiful cards like these. So I've used this with gold embossing powder to get that stunning, almost foiled look. And I've used this one just with ink and coloured in, so kind of more stamping. But you have the letterpress effect there, where you've got the texture from where the letterpress has gone into the cardstock. It really is beautiful. So there's two items that will, of course, have packaging with them if you purchase them. Then we've also got some more dies along with the florals. So we've got the Elegant Gates. Now, these are so pretty. The size is really lovely. We've got two gates and we've got two hinges and as you can see with the florals whether they are in front of them or behind the gates these are absolutely beautiful now we have a layering stamp here textures wouldn't be textures without some more layering in the collection we have got this outline of a floral border here but then we've also got the separate stamp so you can stamp the color into the leaves and petals really nicely and quickly we have got some sentiments now these sentiments include the die for you and the stamp for everything else and the die you comes in three parts so you can have the larger bolder outline the middle or the smaller thinner letters you can mix and match them any way you wish and then we've got like I say the stamps for everything to construct those you sentiments so just for you thank you you are the best flowers for you happy birthday to you you are so special you make me smile and love you you're going to be using these all the time we've also got something else that is new to the textures range and these are rub-ons do you remember rub-ons they were one of my favorite items when i first started crafting they've not been on the scene very much uh, in the last decade or so but they are back with a bang and we have got brick walls we've got florals we've got texture in there absolutely stunning oh and also an alphabet and numbers so you can really personalize your greeting cards with these and lastly a 3d embossing folder this is a brick wall they've called it the great wall it is stunning again bringing you back to this card because you can really see how dimensional this embossing folder is in the background there just behind those gates you'll see lots more of these on my channel over the coming weeks again i'm going to link that in the description for you there it's all available and if you're a craft slash vip member you'll save 10 percent on everything too thank you so much for watching everybody don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done already and i'll speak to you again very soon take care bye bye